good morning, my loyal 44 followers. And if you are new to the channel, I'd really love to make it 45. Seriously, is clicking a button that hard? I'm not, I'm not allowed to get mad at, my, at, at, at the viewers. But, but even if I have anxiety and it's a good stress relief, no. So in today's video, I am going to be talking about 10 shows that helped and yet somehow simultaneously confused the hell out of my sexuality. Now, I'll skip the pleasantries, because let's be honest, you have one of three reasons why you clicked on this video. One, you're confused about your sexuality yourself and think this video may eventually help you out. Two, you know me personally and only clicked on this to find out what the hell I am. Wouldn't you like to know? Three, well, three is a write-in section where you can write in such reasonings for watching as I have nothing better to do, I'm being forced into it because Josie threatened me, or C, alpaca. So you may be wondering what I mean when I say confused my sexuality. Well, let me give you an example. When I was in sixth grade, there was a girl in my class who asked me if I, you know, swung a little bit. I said no. She asked me if it is a little bit, though. I said no. And it took me watching these shows to realize that I was a dumb sixth grader. Celestia, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, you were right. Now, I'm not going to openly disclose what I am, but... I ain't straight. Shh. Now, the technical term not being straight, or in the original Latin, non straitiatus, has a bunch of sub-definitions, including but not limited to the following. Lesbian. By yourself, because woof, good luck with that one. And pot. Sorry, pen. 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 And the shows that I'm going to list today, in no particular order, cover those and many more. Number one, One Day at a Time. I made a video reviewing this show in the past, so go check it out. I highly recommend the show in general. Elena, who's the daughter character and also happens to be gay, was kind of one of the first TV show characters that helped me figure out some stuff. In the first season, she kisses a boy named Josh and is completely surprised to find out that she didn't hate it. However, it's later on in the show that she realizes that not hating isn't loving, and she eventually comes to terms with the fact that, whoop, she gayer than a U-Haul. This show is a great example of how sometimes you have to be patient and take the time to actually experience things before you can define yourself. And I am not saying that you have to kiss a boy to realize your sexuality, but I'm just making the point that you can take your time and figure yourself out if that's what's best for you. Number two, Glee. So Glee is a hugely known show that's famous for its romances in general, but the all-time favorite ships, beloved by even straight people, definitely the favorites are Kurt and Blaine and Brittany and Santana. I'm gonna talk about Kurt and Blaine first. Now, both of them are pretty evidently gay, but they question it at one point or another, both of them actually kissing girls before they realize that, yeah, they only swing one way. But Blaine at one point actually makes a really great point, saying, quote, It's not that I don't like girls. I love them. They're very kind and sensitive and their bodies are beautiful. But loving them in that way is just not who I am. Next up, Brittany and Santana. So when I first saw these two, I was kind of like, Okay. And then I kept watching. Okay. Then when they finally realized their feelings for each other, I was like, okay, okay, okay. Kind of similar to Kurt and Blaine, but on a larger scale, both Brittany and Santana dated tons of boys before getting together and were kind of also having sex with each other on the side the entire time, which at first neither of them acknowledged as gay at all. Like, nah, I'm not gay. I just like having sex with girls. Pfft. Number three, atypical. 
I also did a full-on review in a separate video that I highly recommend watching if this show sounds interesting to you as a whole. However, in that video, I kind of go over the general analysis of the show, and this one I'm going to be getting more specific and going into one of the greatest and most beloved TV romances, uh, LGBT romances on screen, this one. The relationship between Casey Gardner and Evan Chapin in the show is sweet. He's a nice guy, there's nothing really wrong with him, he's kind of the perfect first boyfriend, but because of that, the entire time we're kind of like, okay, there's gotta be more to this. Enter the more to this. Izzy is a classmate of Casey's who at first is actually very mean to her, but even from their first interaction, we're kind of all like, uh-huh, sure. And their love story is kind of one for the ages. Now, I think a lot of people get the wrong impression about this show because they think maybe what it's saying is that, uh, like, all men are boring and if you're bisexual, you're just gonna end up with a girl in the end. And I don't think that's always true. But in this case, what I took away from the show is that regardless of gender, not all people are okay with things just being perfect. And sometimes for a relationship to thrive, there has to be a little bit of drama. What I have to also say is what this show did really well is that it doesn't ever label anything. It never actually specifically says Casey and Izzy are uh, bisexual or Evan straight or anyone for that matter is anything. Um, although when we're talking about it, it's easier to label the characters. But I, what I took away from the show also is that labels don't always matter. Number four, Alexa and Katie. Now I know what you're thinking. Josie, what? I only say this one because the entire time during the show, I wanted them to get together so badly subconsciously. And then at a certain point, I was like, wait, Josie, why? And then I realized I no longer care about female friendships on screen. Psych. I love female friendships on screen. Not just not that one. In fact, the next show I'm going to be talking about has uh, female friendships at its core. Um, it is Trinkets. This show is about three girls who become best friends, and go figure, one of them is gay. This show proved to me once and for all, and hopefully proved to a lot of homophobic straight girls once and for all, that gay girls can be friends with straight girls. Number six, Orange is the New Black. <laughs> you actually, you actually thought I watched Orange is the New Black? No, what? No way. <laughs> oh my god, would you look at that? I think any reality TV show just came on. Okay, now that the moms are gone. Oh my God, you know, football just came on too. Now the dads are away. Okay, now that the parents are gone, just remember, there's always deleting your search histories. Number seven, Lucifer. Part of the whole thing with the show is that the celestial beings in the series don't have gender. So they've been with both men and women and honestly just don't care. And that made me go, Dag nabbit, if the devil can be fluid. Number eight, sex ed. I'm hoping the parents aren't back yet, but you know what, whatever, it's fine. So this show pretty much explores every nook and cranny of sexuality that there is, and it just puts in perspective how confused everyone is, and it's okay to question, and it's okay to not know, and it's okay to seek help with it, like a lot of characters do in the show. So this is relevant because I'm also going to be talking about it in regards to the next show, but this show defines pansexuality as being attracted to someone regardless of their gender. So you just like someone for who they are. So the next show, number nine, Big Mouth. Okay, so this show, much like Sex Ed, but cringier, is all about teenage danks, and that includes sexuality. There's one episode about sexuality where one of the main characters thinks he might be gay and has this kind of big moment where he gets really caught up in the in the glamorous lifestyle that comes along with being gay, you know, like the flaunting and the parading. And uh, at the end of the episode, he realizes that in fact he is straight and it goes to show that questioning your sexuality goes both ways. And as that same episode also gives a big presentation about tons of the different kinds of sexualities there are out there, I promptly began questioning myself as every good little human should. The show also has this point where this new girl comes to the school and tells people that she's pan and no one knows what that means, so she defines it like this. So I like tacos and I like burritos, but theoretically I could also like a burrito that's transitioning to a taco and a taco that's transitioning into a burrito. Now there is a lot of confusion and controversy as to what pansexuality is, but I'm here to kind of set the record straight, or <laughs> in this case, <laughs> set the record pan. No? You didn't like that? Okay. The definition that's closer to being true is the one in sex ed. Number 10, Elite. 
So this show has some controversial romances, to say the least. And it does have a lot of gay characters, uh, even ones that get thrown out by their parents because of their sexuality. But what I really liked about this show is that it was controversial, but basically said to me, love is love. Which is obviously a great message to take away from a show, and I don't just mean about gay relationships. It goes deep into other types of things, such as what we might call incest, which I'm not really going to get into because it's a really heavy topic. Um, but it also demonstrates poly relationships, which hasn't been represented on TV that much. And so I was happy about that. Another heavy topic, but still. And But I just think the show is groundbreaking in a lot of good ways. Alright, so obviously there are two ton of LGBTQIA plus shows on Netflix, Hulu, pretty much any streaming service you can find. It's modern day. There are tons of them. Um, but basically, this was just a personal list of shows that made me help, uh, question, or just in general think about, uh, you know, this kind of stuff. And so if any of the shows that I listed, you know, sound promising to you, or maybe you just want to get a good perspective on our modern changing world, then go watch some of them. It'll definitely be worth your while. If this video was worth your time, it makes no difference to me. If this video wasn't worth your time, but you don't hit that like button, that does make a difference to me. <laughs> so hit that like button, subscribe, and comment, and hopefully I will see you next time. But seriously, go do all that stuff, okay? I'll wait. You're not going? I give up. I give up.